but it is high, and it is high, Lord, and there are times when I'm burning boom for a load, I forget to glory, yeah, the reason that I find, your promise to dawn after the night, and I know we are my child, who waits for me a prize, Lord, yeah, I think about Walking the streets, I'm going out the way I'm gonna make it with them, my Lord. And just the thought of never ever having to grow old. Ain't got no way I'm gonna make it with them, my Lord. My spirit cries, you're to by the legal home. Ain't got no way, ain't got no way. Got no way. But it gets high, and it gets high. Lord, and there are times when I put a boom for a load. I forget to glory here. Yeah, the reason that I fight, you promised the dawn after the night. And I know we are my child, who waits for me to Christ and God no way. I'm never gonna make it. No way. I'm never gonna reach it. No way. Spirit dwelling in me, how to walk in peace on me, can get no way, I'm ever gonna make it, no way, I'm ever gonna reach it, no way, I'm ever gonna Father, we come before you, dear Lord God, thank you for the name that you have made, thank you for the prophecy of my name. Almighty God, as we come before you, dear Lord God, we worship your name, dear Father Lord, we ask for the tolerance, the understanding, the need be there, Father Lord, because let's open our hearts and our minds as we accept today's worship in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we'll hand over to our song leader to carry us in song. A pleasant good morning to everyone and welcome to our worship service this morning as we begin our singing service by singing song number 50, Are You Washed in the Blood of the Lamb? Are You Washed in the Blood? Are You Washed in the Blood? Song number 50, Have You Been to Jesus for His Cleansing Power? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this heart? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? Cleansing blood of the Lamb, I have 
him see what God had done. So amid the conflict where the great were small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Counter many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journeys. So count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. One by three, footprints of Jesus. After the song, we'll have our, the man sermon that will come forward and present the lesson from God's word. Footprints of Jesus. One by three. Sweetly, Lord, every earthy calling, come follow me. And we see where thy footprints fall in, lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that may we will follow the steps of Jesus wherever they go. Though they lead for the cold dark mountain, see in the sheep or a
That being said, for the book of Psalms, allow us the opportunity upon given to gather and to continue lifting up our voices in singing praise unto God. Kindly in your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 9. Romans, the ninth chapter. Though you may hear some scripture that you are familiar with, I always encourage you to look at the verses that you read, because there will be some things that you will see that will be very interesting for us to take note of. Romans, the ninth chapter, beginning from verse number 3. Two weeks ago, I started a, I delivered a message entitled, What Are We Saved By? And I'm going to continue on that particular topic, What Are We Saved By? As we look at the text, Romans chapter 9, verse 3 to verse number 5. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God blessed forever and let the church say amen. Salvation is mentioned so many times in the Bible, I have stopped counting. And it is a necessity for us to learn of why salvation is so important for all of mankind. And so for the person who is lost, seeking to come in, whereby they can be saved, they must understand what they are turning away from, so that they're able to appreciate where they are. But not only so, those who have been Christians for many years may sometimes lose the essence and the value as to why we are saved. And if we lost that, then we have lost a lot because Christianity becomes a ritualistic life, a life in which we go through just the motions every day because we have been baptized, which means that we are already saved, and there's nothing else that we do thereafter. That's not what the Bible talks about. And that's the reason why in Romans chapter number 10 and verse number 1 and 2, the scripture tells us as Paul writes to the church of Rome, he also mentioned about Israel. He said, listen, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Why are you making this earnest request for Israel to be saved? Isn't Israel God's chosen people? Isn't Israel the people whom God gave his covenants to? Isn't Israel the people whom God made his promises to? Isn't Israel the firstborn? Why is his prayer for Israel to be saved? Because earlier in the book of Romans, chapter number 3, you would read from verse number 1, he asked the question, what advantage then had the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Why did he say that? Because in chapter 1 of the book of Romans, he condemned the Gentiles and their paganistic lifestyle. In chapter 2 in the book of Romans, he condemned the Jews for their own uprightness, thinking that they are so important that they cannot even fail. And so when you read chapter 3, he condemns both Jews and Gentiles, and he made the conclusion, we are all under sin. So the Jew is not better than the Gentile, neither the Gentile better than the Jew. So when Paul said, my heart is I prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved, it's because even though Jews were saved, it's like they were still lost. What does that mean to us? Where does that put us as a people of God? Could we be saved and still be lost? Well, that's the reason why we are going through these scriptures to understand that just as the Jews were saved but still they were lost, we too can find ourselves in similar situations. You see, having knowledge of God's word can help us to understand why we are saved. Because this knowledge influences every decision that we make. This knowledge influences our religious life. This knowledge helps us to know what to do after and how to live our lives. The Jews were content as long as they were circumcised, according to the law of Moses, they were all right. 
and some of us have to have the same idea. As long as I'm baptized into Christ, I'm saved. Everything is alright. Well, we saw in the last lesson that we are saved by water baptism. Now that's a fact because in the world today, some don't believe that water was part of God's plan. And so we are saved by water baptism because God chose that means by which we can enter into the body of Christ and by which we have all and many other blessings. So water baptism is a necessity. Then according to Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 5, we are saved by the washing of regeneration. In other words, we have been born again and renewed, renovated. So every child of God must see themselves as a newborn, renewed individual who is now living a life that is not pleasing to ourselves, but pleasing to whom? To God. And then we saw that the Holy Spirit is part of our indwelling so that Anytime we have any questions of doubt or anything that we need to know or understand and, and realize that, hey, how do I do this? How do I live? How do I endure? The Spirit of God, through His words, give us all the answers. So, no Christian can live a life of godliness without the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And so the third point I'm going to bring for our lesson today is simply this. If you turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, and I really want to get into the context of those who are watching us on Facebook and, and YouTube and those who are here, I want us to get into the context of what you'll be able to see. Now, the point is this, we are saved not only uh, through water baptism, we are saved not only through this rebirth and being renovated in God by which the Holy Spirit dwells in us, but we are saved by a word called grace. Through faith. And not of the works of the Lord. I need to explain this to us, please, if you will. You see, the Bible tells us, first of all, in John 1, 17, that the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yeah. So then it means if I truly understand the grace of God that allowed me to be in the position of being saved, then what does it have to do with my life as a Christian every single day? A lot of people are accustomed with the words or phrase grace before me, correct? Yeah, we grew up learning that before you eat. Let's say grace before meal. And sometimes there's a prayer set at the table and people's eyes are still open watching the big chicken on the table because you don't want everybody to get to understand. But it's grace before meals. Giving God thanks before we eat. But it's much more than that. When God says we are saved by grace, it is much more than that. Look at what Paul said to the brethren at Ephesus in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning from verse number 1. He said, listen, you who were dead in trespasses and sins, you might have in the King James Version, happy quickened in italics, but that's no problem. You who were dead in trespasses and sins, burned in time past, hold on. He said you were dead. You were dead in your wrongdoings, you were dead in your misdeeds, you were dead in your faults, you were dead in your sins. So what does it mean? What does it mean to be dead? Anybody ever died here and then come back to life? So we don't know, we don't know what it means to be dead. As a matter of fact, there are so many people on social media right now that tell you that when they died and they came back, they come up, they came back and they tell you, oh I saw Jesus. Oh I saw heaven and I saw this and I saw that and I communicated with Jesus and he sent me back with a message. If Jesus sends you back with a message, then we have to write over Luke chapter 16. Because we know then that Abraham said, listen to this rich man, you cannot leave here to go back and give anybody any message. So the only people who are able to be raised from the dead, as you know, are those whom Jesus Christ would have risen, or those whom the apostles would have had their hand in raising. But after that, there's nothing like that to look forward to again. Because he says you were dead in your trespasses this time. 
And how were you there? In time past, you, you walked according to the course of this world. In time past, you, you, you walk according to the ruler, the prince of the poor of the air, the spirit that continues to work in the children of disobedience. But what part does grace play again? Oh Lord, you come into that. You come into that. So Paul reminds the brethren that you were dead because of sin. And why were you dead? You walked according to the way of this world. And then verse 3, he just continued, among whom you also had your conversation in time past, fulfilling the lust of the flesh, the lust of the mind. And we become the nature of the children of God's wrath. So therefore, we don't deserve to live. We don't deserve anything. We are a no good, wretched, sinner, people, whatever you want to call it. We don't deserve anything. But then verse 4 says, what God? That's the part about it, right? But God, who is rich in mercy for his great work, uh, his great love where he loved us, even when we were, what's that word? Yeah. Even when we were yeah. dead in sin, has quickened us. Now that word quicken really means to be made alive or to restore life again. So God already knew our state and knew our condition, but he quickened us together with Christ and in parentheses, you see the words come up, by grace are you saved. So that means that God is saying, listen, I didn't have to save you, you know. I don't have to do anything to preserve your life. I don't have to. But then why did you do that? Why? Why did God have to save me? And then he says, we are saved by grace. He comes in the use of the word grace. And it is this, we can also look at verse number 8 and verse number 9 in the same chapter, in the same context. And he says, for by grace are ye saved. Get this now. Through faith. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's understand this quite clearly. Grace, particularly, is that which causes joy, is that which causes pleasure, is that which brings gratification? Is that which brings favor? So God is saying, I am extending my favor or my kindness to you that you will be able to be saved. Not that we deserve it. Not that we are, are, are welcoming to say that we have to be saved. Because look at your life. Look at my life. Is there anything good that you can speak of to say that I deserve salvation? The answer is no. None of us don't. But then, by grace are you saved through that same faith. Now, if it is by faith that grace plays a very important part, we're talking about because Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins and he rose again to give me life eternal, it is on the basis of that I believe in him. And if I believe in him, God's grace comes into effect. You follow me now? Amen. I hope you do. All right, just to make a little, little bit more clear for us. In, in Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Let me just clarify some things for us a little bit to be able to understand why I'm mentioning this for you. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Alright? First of all, Paul said in verse number uh, 18. I'll start from 18. If I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgression. But Paul is reflecting upon the life that he lived before. And before, he did so many things ignorantly, but now God gave him mercy, and now he has grace. Now watch this. He's going to talk about faith now. Verse 19. For I through the law, I'm dead to the law, that I might live unto God. Amen. I am crucified with who? Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth me in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by. I live by. That faith is the conviction, the belief in Christ's death, in his burial, in his resurrection. So because I believe in that, I have life eternal, and that life eternal means an extension of God's grace. Okay? What are we saved by? We are saved by God's grace. What does that mean? It means that God's favor has been bestowed upon me, which I do not deserve. What does that mean? It means that Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 says, The grace of God that bringeth salvation and appear unto all men. So the grace of God is not racial. The 
grace of God is not prejudicial. The grace of God is not discriminatory. The grace of God is for all men. So when you look at somebody and you say, based on the crime, based on his looks, based on his smell, based on something about him, he's not worthy to be saved. Hear what God says. The grace of God comes for all. That's why Paul can be saved. As wretched as Paul was, as, as hard as Paul was, he can, he can still be saved because the grace of God is for all men. So the grace of God, I keep repeating that for us to understand, we are saved by God's grace through faith. If there is no faith in Christ Jesus, there is no grace. Brother Gassi, if there is no faith in Christ Jesus, there is no grace. How can you have favor? given to us by God if you don't have a conviction in Christ Jesus. And then, he says, in other words, let any man should boast. In the context, again, the Jews often hold on to the Mosaic law to do what they require for them to, to say that they have faith. So they base their faith on observing and doing the law, fulfilling the Mosaic law. Now sometimes we base faith on so many different things. Lord, you gave me life this morning. I believe in you. Therefore, I need for you to bless me throughout the entire day. You see, God has already blessed us for the entire day. But we need to understand that we have to live by faith while we see this faith. <laughs> Let me bring that again so you can fully understand what I just said. Not that you don't understand. I want to say fully understand. Every day here people say, I live by the grace of God. What does that mean? I live by his favor. I live by the fact of by his kindness. But you see, if there is no conviction in God, that becomes another point. So you're not living by every day living by grace. No. If there's no conviction, that becomes null and void. So faith and grace works hand in hand. That's why he says we are saved by grace through faith. And that not of ourselves has nothing to do with you or I. It has to do with what God had already set up, designed, and arranged. So when God looks down on this earth, he's looking for people who are living by faith because they are the recipients of his grace. But if you're not living by faith, you cannot receive the grace of God that will be able to put you in a better position. Did you not say Titus chapter 2 verse 12 that the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness? And word in us that we should live soberly and righteously and godly when and where in this present age. So God's grace affects man's sinfulness and not only forgives the repentant sinner but brings joy and thankfulness to him. Are we not glad to be recipients of God's grace? Are we not glad? To say, God, thank you every morning. Are you not glad that when you sit down and you have something to eat, that's the measurement of God saying, I have already provided for you because why? Of your faith in me. If you look at the history of God's people, anytime they begin to lose or lack faith, things happen that challenge them. And they don't realize how important and effective God is. Where grace is concerned. And so look at 2 Timothy chapter number 1, if you will. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter number 1. As Paul the Apostle was writing to this young man, Timothy, and he was writing this last epistle to him, he wanted to tell him something that he would be able to remember, to uphold, and to, to, to not forget. And he said in 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you will, please with me in your Bible, verse number 8. Paul says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but be thou partakers of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Maybe I read too fast, but let me take it a little slow for you to understand what I'm saying. Paul said, Listen, I don't want you to be ashamed of the testimony or the witness of me, of, of, of the Lord, and then of me as a prisoner, but I want you to be sharers or partakers of the affliction or the trouble of the gospel according to the poor God. Why is this familiar? Why is he saying that? Well, he's saying that because of verse 9. Because God had done what? Verse 9. He who had saved us and called us with us. Good. So number one, God had preserved 
and delivered us, but he also called us. The word call is an invitation to respond to the gospel so that we'll be separated or sanctified or be considered consecrated before God. So it's not just a calling. Not like, let me, let me dial, a dial for the tone of my call. This is the call from heaven for the tone you are now saying. That will happen. You see, Brother Tom has to hear the message of God and respond because he knows by responding to the gospel message he will be separated, consecrated, sanctified. So therefore, the only way that one can be saved is through that means. Now get this, because we're talking about grace. He says, not according to our works, Miss Lang, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given in Christ Jesus. When church, before what? The will begun. So all of what God had planned started in his mind. And we are just the recipients of his blessings and his plan started in his mind. So when a Christian says, by the grace of God I am saved, he or she must understand what that means. It's not saying that God just decides, let me just do your favor. No, God has to look at our sinfulness our sinful condition and realize that there's nothing we could do to change our sinful condition. So he, he extended to us that grace. But he didn't give it to us just like that. He said, listen, it has to do with faith. So when faith is active in our lives, then we receive the grace of God. All right? So as we consider what Paul has said, has said, we just want to go back to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9 and 10. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10. Verse 15. Paul says, Hope you're there. For I am the least, I am the least of the apostles. That I'm not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Is that in your Bible? Right. I am the least, I am nothing, I'm inferior. Because of what I have done. I don't deserve anything, Lord, because of what I have done. But Brother Trevor, you know what he did? In verse number 10, he says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. So I don't deserve what you're giving me, God. But it's only by your grace. I am what I am. Could we say that about ourselves? I don't deserve anything, God, but it's by your grace. I am the man. And then there's another word grace used in the same text where he says, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. So what is Paul saying now? He's talking about an extended form of grace in that not only did God give him a favor that he does not deserve, but God equipped him with the ministry of proclaiming the gospel. So this grace that's mentioned in the second part is an equipment for ministering or serving by helping others to know of his grace. Are you following me so far? Yes. So when God says, I give you an extended favor of kindness, I'm also going to give you something to help others to receive that same grace. And then there's a third grace, positive grace. Upon me, not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but what is labored in me? Yet not I, but... Look at verse 10. Yet not I, but... Look at verse 10, read it again. Yet not I, but the, <laughs> the grace of God which was. So he completes it now. Three different types of angles where grace is concerned. One, he receives God's favor and kindness, even though he didn't deserve it. Two, God has equipped him with that form of ministry and what is required for him to deliver his word. And thirdly, the grace that dwells in him continue to give him an identity that he belongs to God. That's why wherever he goes, God's grace is with him. Wherever you go, God's grace is with you. And if we keep those things in mind, then we know that we are saved by grace, through faith, and not thought of ourselves. Finally, it is the gift of God. Hmm. Why is it so important that God continue to be a giver of good gifts? And we, when we look at the things that God has done, sometimes we question, 
Is it not enough that God has given us so many wonderful things? Yes. God has given us what? Ah, life. Yeah, we are thankful. Health and strength. So when you get up this morning, you know, Lord, thank you for life, etc. But God didn't just give life. He gave what you call abundant life. So that a Christian, when a Christian dies today, you know, the psalmist says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of all his what? But if a non-Christian dies, he or she has to, where are they? What is their relationship with God? What's going to happen? So let's not take God's grace for granted. Because it's not just God saying, I do a favor for you. Uh -uh. It's more than that. I am able now to restore my kindness, equip you for ministry, that you will be able to have within you my grace that will see. Because it is a gift. A gift from God. Romans 6, 22 tells us, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. For whom? And for those who are not yet Christians, the gospel comes to you. The grace of God brings salvation. God says, you must hear his words. And I know that through social media, and for those who are here, you have heard his words. Romans 10, 17, faith does come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Then God says, when you hear, you must believe. Why is belief so important? Because that's where your conviction lies, in order for the grace of God, after your conversion, to be fully active. So John 8, 24 said, if you don't believe that I am here, you will die in your sins. And then repentance is a necessity. Except you repent, you shall all like Christ perish. You need to change before you die. And then confess that Jesus Christ is God's Son. Romans 10, 9 and 10. After today, be baptized for the remission of your sins and the gift of the Holy Ghost. And verse 47, the Lord will add you to his church. The church in the Bible, the church that he has established. So I pray that God will continue to bless us as we realize that we are not only saved through water baptism, we are not only saved through regeneration or rebirth in Christ Jesus, we are not only saved because of the Holy Spirit will us, we are saved by grace through faith. And that not only saved, it is the gift of God. This is the message for us this morning. Please remember what the Lord has said. That as we go through the day, the weeks and the months and the years to come, we live by faith, but also by the grace of God, I am what I am. The Lord bless you. Invitation to Hold on fun of every blessing, Psalm 500. Hold on fun of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Hold on fun of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never see. Call for songs of love and spring. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fill my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope I my good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace of greater debtor daily and constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a better bind my wound 
open heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave the God I love in my heart. Oh, take and seal it, seal it for the courts of Good morning to all. As we are going to partake of the Lord's Supper, we just read a short passage of scripture to remind us as the origin of the supper and tokens related to it. Look at the book of Luke, chapter 22, and reading from verse 40. And when there was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before his supper. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and he gave thanks, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. So as we Partake of the unlimited represents the body of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us go to God in prayer and this day. Merciful and loving Father in heaven, thank you. thank you once again for giving us this privilege whereby we have come before your throne of grace through the sacrifice of your Son Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for his body which was spat upon, which was nailed upon that cross. Yes, the side, all for our sakes. You know, you ensure all this because of our sins. And at this time, Father, we bring before you our sins, for so, sin daily in thoughts, in deeds and deeds. Father, we ask you to forgive us of all our sins, dispense us of all righteousness. So as we ascend and as we are going to partake, that we do so without spot, without blemish, through your cleansing. So we thank you for Jesus and for his body, which is broken to us. We ask the blessed bread as we partake of it in Jesus' name. Let's go to God in prayer as we ask for the blessings and the fruit of the time. Once again, Father, we come before you in humility. We acknowledge you as our God, as our Creator, the Supreme Majesty and Creator of all things. We come before you, Father, and we bring before you the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood of the Son, which has shed for the remission of all sins. And we pray that as we partake of it, that you bless it, help us, Father, to you. Recognize our deficiencies and help us as we walk a party that we 
with your commitment to serve you and to serve you to so we pray that you bless us and continue to strengthen us in Jesus' name. Come to another important aspect of our devotion to God, respect to giving. You know the scripture tells us on the course of the week, we should lay aside as God has prospered us. And we know that the scripture tells us all that we have belongs to God. We are just stewards of the things that He has given us. It says the good is the Lord and the us of So as we Examine ourselves and we recognize how blessed we are. Let us go to God and pray as we give thanks for what we are about to give and understand. Almighty God and Father in heaven, Father, we thank you for all that you have given us. You have given us life this day. You have to walk, you have to come and assemble here, you have to even have ears that we can hear the words of life you have given to us. Thank you for the jobs that you have given to us, for the strengths we need to work as women and come. And as we recognize how much we have been blessed, we pray, Father, as we ought to give, that we do so from a pure heart, we do so not virtually or necessarily, but we give joyfully and abundantly. So we pray that you bless what we offer today, and to be acceptable unto you, in Jesus' name. Good morning again to everyone. Um, I have just a few prayer requests from Sister Cassian, from Brother Leroy, and uh, Sister Gracie. Please join with me in prayer at this time. Our Heavenly Father, as we approach your divine throne of grace, whereby we can seek your favor, your kindness, whereby we can be accepted by you. We are thankful for this divine privilege, which is made possible through your Son, Jesus. We are thankful, dear God, for your many blessings which you have bestowed upon us, both physically and spiritually. And every day as we live, we pray that we turn to you and remember that you are the Lord of all grace. Thank you for Sister Katia, who 
want us to acknowledge and to recognize Sister McGill Reed's birthday uh, today. I ask Brother Leroy also ask the same that we remember uh, Sister Heather McGill Reed, that you continue to bless her, that she would see many more years to come in her life, and that you, Father, um, will continue to work in her life, so that she dedicates herself to you, that even my days such as this, to remember that you have given her life, health, strength, and many other things. So you are thankful for her, dear God, and may you continue to bless her. We are also asking uh, prayers for Sister Glenda, who will be celebrating her birthday as well. We pray that God that you continue to look upon her, so that as she always look to praise you for her life and to glorify you for the many things that you have given unto her, that you will add yet another year and many more years to come to her life. So we ask your blessings upon her, Father, that you keep her safe and in your care. We also ask, Sister Kathy asks prayers for uh, Sister Rebecca, praying that God, that God will continue to bestow wisdom and love and compassion towards her in her heart and that she will continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sister Grace is asking prayers for our neighbor first by the name of Shafiq, who is not well, so that you, Father, knowing the extent of the condition of the person, will be able to help them, that they will be delivered, and that they will turn to you to give you the honor, glory, and praise that you deserve. We pray also for Brother Marlon, that you will help him to have a stable mind in all that he does, and that he too, Father, remember your great love for him, that as he goes through his struggles in life, that he will not forget who you are, and do the thing that will bring honor and glory to your name. So thank you, Father, for all those who have brought forth these prayer requests. May you bless them and their families, continue their Father to give them strength, and help us as a people to do your will by following after your grace. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name, we thank you, Amen. Amen. Good morning once again, Church. Thank God for our Wendell this morning for a sermon. Thank God for all the people who came here this morning came to worship at the building. And we want to thank especially people who took the time off to be on social media. There are some way of announcements. TV program, No Way Bible, on YouTube, Church Media Channel, Sunday mornings at 7 a.m. No Way Bible is on YouTube via church media every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. The radio program continue, continues on Sundays from 5 to 6 p.m. Walk Radio, 90.1 with Brother Wendell, and at 8.30, on 90, 8.30 to 9.15, sorry, at Sky Radio, 99.5 with Brother Mahir Spisunda. Um, young ladies' class continues at 5 p.m. every Tuesday. Young ladies' class at 5 p.m. on every Tuesday. Bible class continues 7 p.m. on a Thursday. Um, uh, normal uh, Sunday morning worship, 9.30 a.m. on the Sunday morning, and it can be viewed through YouTube and Facebook. Um, again, don't forget to open the evidence committee. I believe they're still taking groceries and cash. Um, is there any other announcements? Good morning, brothers and sisters. First, let me say, let me make an announcement. Take any my 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 pick my pendant before I start telling what I have to say. 
Thank you for the talk. Just want to quickly say, remember our Sunday school class as well. Um, half past, in fact, quarter to three, quarter to three to half past three, zero to five, six to eight, and you have the. Hmm, that should be my next time. And you have the nine to twelve. Nine to twelve is, is quarter to three to three thirty, and zero to five, six to eight is three thirty to four, right? Every Sunday evening on Zoom. We have about two minutes. Two minutes, brother Charles. Two minutes. Two minutes to sing happy birthday in samba. Not chutney, not pure, not any other but samba. All right. So let's sing happy birthday to uh, Sister Glenda, the youngest person, and then uh, happy birthday to Sister Heather as well. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs>